What you're looking at is a MIST uh, FPGA system. Um, I'm including a sample SD card um, with um, with a working uh, Amiga workbench on it so that you have a reference to to use and go back to if you want to um, if you want to be able to use it you can't really see here but it's got the three uh, three function buttons there's a reset on-screen menu and uh, the uh, user uh, or core specific function button I got the uh, the green power light the, uh, the the yellow and the red uh, LEDs there that show us uh, you know different statuses of the core and the power of the mist itself this model over here also has the MIDI ports uh, if you want to use, uh, for instance, an Atari ST uh, core, that will allow you to uh, connect MIDI synthesizers to it. And if we look at the back, so I might not have enough uh, enough light here, but it's got uh, it's got a USB. It's got four USB ports, one of which right now is connected to my. Um, uh, it's connected to my hub that has my mouse my controller and my keyboard the reason I do that is because I frequently switch between my mist and my mister so the mister only has one USB port but otherwise you could just as well connect everything you wanted here on one of the four uh, four USB ports that's the audio audio output uh, uh, headphone jack size and then you've got uh, the power, oh my gosh, it's a little dark back here, but uh, you've got the power, uh, uh, micro USB uh, type B con uh, connector, and the power switch is right here, which you can't see because it's too dark. Standard VGA output. If I connect my, my hub back in here, then uh, you know, we'll be able to have a look at it. So this Mini MiniMig is configured with uh, workbench 3.1 and I've configured it with two discs so you do that by configuring the hard disk settings uh, there's a minimig.hdf and a dh1.hdf so that's done through the emulation of the uh, Amiga 600 IE um, well, while we're here, we might as well continue looking at the settings here. It's uh, doing a 6802 CPU, so basically a, an Amiga 1200 if you want. Currently the video is set for PAL, but uh, you can set that to NTSC. As a matter of fact, I think I may uh, just configure it with NTSC so that it has better compatibility with any monitor that you connect it to right out of the box so that you can at least get that working. Got an AGA chipset, and uh, well, it's got no CD32 pad, but you can configure a USB game pad if you want it to work uh, with it. Uh, then it's got uh, two megabytes of chip RAM, no slow RAM, and the, fa the maximum configuration of fast RAM, which I believe is about uh, what 32 megs, according to what the workbench reports at the top there. So you can configure with no fast RAM, two, four, or maximum. So it's configured with a uh, Kick ROM 3.1 for the Amiga 1200, and it's got HRT ROM disabled. Then you've got a few uh, settings here to help you kind of tweak the look and feel of the video. If you want scan lines, or if you want to have uh, if you want to have some filtering happening on the uh, screen don't know if the camera quite caught that but kind of gives a little bit of a, um, a fuzzy look in case you're running this on a very very sharp LCD screen or a, a flat screen display so and that's it then we're back to the, 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 th the three main settings here which are chipset memory and video and uh, if you make any changes to these, it's best to save it. it supports up to uh, five configurations, so that's kind of nice. Uh, what else is there to say here? Uh, we've ch we've uh, looked at the hard disk settings, and uh, yeah, then you've got uh, you can configure your keyboard and USB uh, uh, joysticks, and do some investigation here if you want. Um, and uh, that's it.
that's the only core that I've got on this sample SD card that I'm including. It's got the Mini MiG core. Uh, this one here, uh, that core, um, I can't remember which version of the core it is, but it's fairly recent. Um, and the firmware of the Mist itself is from May 30th, 2021. So that's a very recent firmware. Um, I guess there's nothing else to talk about here in the settings. You can control uh, the contents of the two floppy drives here as well, and also configure whether or not it uses a disk turbo speed or if it's just you know default clock. Oh, it looks like uh, it just scrolled over the version of the uh, core itself, uh, right over here, core beta version 2011-22, so that would be November 22, 2020, fairly recent core as well. So, um, so the workbench that's been installed is version 3.1, and it's pretty plain and default setup. The two disk image that I've installed here, the two disks as I've mentioned earlier, are uh, 200 megs each. So the first one here has the system on it, the workbench, and the second one is blank for your uh, for your benefit. Just a courtesy there. Include a few uh, ready to go disks that were um, are on the SD card. Uh, as far as the resolution that I've used here, um, I'm using an NTSC high res, but the this is very very dependent on what scans, uh, scan frequencies your monitor will support. If I wanted to go to PAL, that would work for it. Um, the Mist Core itself supports the uh, the video set to NTSC or PAL, so that'll that'll have an impact as to um, the the, the built-in scan doubler on the Mister itself, which can be enabled or disabled according to your capabilities of your monitor. If it supports, for instance, um, uh, 15 kilohertz. Uh, horizontal scan, then you can go into the MIST INI file on the uh, on the uh, SD card and check that yourself if you want. Uh, turn that on and off and experiment with uh, the capabilities of your monitor depending how close of a um, um, original you know, original scan uh, settings that you want to be able to support. So. So yeah, in this particular case, I've set it up with NTSC, but if I wanted to use uh, PAL high res, that would work. I um, can switch here on the fly and it would get a little bit more screen space on PAL as long as your monitor supports it. So that's why uh, I didn't save that setting. I'm keeping it in NTSC high res, which is uh, 640 by 200. That way, when you um, when you take it and plug it into your screen, your monitor, you have uh, better chances of success without having trouble with uh, the sync speed out of the box. So just provided for your, uh, again, for your benefit here. So everything else is pretty much default. This is the um, this is the workbench 3.1 that uh, pretty much vanilla out of the box, no customization. The only thing I might have added is in the tools folder, I added um, um, I added LHA, which I believe is not shown with an icon. So I'll show all files, and you will see LHA over here has been added. That's the uh, 68020 binary version of LHA. Um, if I hit the reset button on the mist. Um, you'll be able to see from the ground up as it powers up. Uh, it comes up with the Minimig splash screen there. It loads up, gives you a bit of information there. And then it starts to boot up the actual uh, Amiga OS. And that takes a second or two and then it comes up. So there's, uh, there you go. So it just uh, just works.